Hi everyone. If you're wondering why I haven't posted any YouTube videos over the last few months, let me give you the 411 on what I've been up to. First of all, when COVID hit, my dad needed assistance getting his church services online. Now, my dad is, how do I put this diplomatically? Technologically challenged. I'm happy to report that through much trial and error working with his team, their live stream went from this type of production. Before you see us, Lewis. Oh, camera's dropped by Kiran. We need tech assistance, Kai. <laughs> tech assistance. To looking more like this in just a few months. Now, as you well know, COVID basically shut down recreational activity for a while. And the lack of group exercise, combined with getting a brand new barbecue, led to me putting on what many are referring to as the Quarantine 15, something my buddy Daryl was quick to rub in when I posted this photo on Twitter. More on him later. To counteract the weight gain, I was forced to get up early and hit the treadmill. Now normally, I would just fire up the highlights from the night before while I'm running. But there are none. So, I've actually been watching a whole bunch of NHL classic series on YouTube, which I've really enjoyed. Particularly the 1993 Penguins Islanders and 1996 Panthers Flyers series. I can tell you one thing for sure. I would not have cancelled my sports package for four months if they had been airing these on TV. If you are like me and you really need a hockey fix before it comes back on the 28th, check out the playlist I created. It's got all of the best series and they're in chronological order. Now, we also picked up a secondhand keyboard back in May, which I gotta tell you, has really helped me get my musical career back on track. Yeah, it's really coming along. Now, I think for a lot of us, COVID forced us to get our priorities in order, or to at least re-examine them, myself included. And because of that, I found that I really didn't miss sports for the first few months. I've certainly tried to take advantage of the extra free time with my family. While I'm on the subject of priorities, I have to tell you, I don't agree with the NHL returning to play at this time. In my opinion, they are putting money ahead of health, which is an unnecessary risk. Now, having said that, I don't make these decisions. The players coming back is completely beyond my control. So even though I fundamentally disagree with the decision, I'm going to do my best to hope that everyone remains healthy, and try to enjoy watching the games. As we all know, the Oilers are one of the teams that will be participating in these games. Only the second time in the last 14 years they have done so. Now, I could spend a whole bunch of time reviewing how we got here, but I don't really see the point. In my opinion, these playoffs are a completely different season. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to invalidate the merits of the 2020 playoffs. I think whoever wins will be a deserving champion. What I'm saying is they'll be the COVID Cup champs, not the 1920 season Stanley Cup winner. This is basically a standalone tournament that is loosely based on last season's results. Now, there are a couple of things that I would like to highlight from the last calendar year of the Oilers. Probably the most noticeable difference from the Oilers of a year ago is how much faster they are. Under Peter Shirelli, the Oilers got big and heavy, something I was very on board with at the time. I had watched the Oilers be 
pushed around mercilessly by the three big, tough California teams for years, and it needed to be addressed. Speaking of those three teams, little sidebar here, this is the first time since the 1996 postseason that none of the California clubs will be playing in the playoffs, which I think is pretty neat. Anyway, the unfortunate thing for the Oilers was the league as a whole was moving away from physicality and more towards speed and puck possession. Ironically, a team with the league's fastest player was struggling to keep up with the pace of other teams. Milan Lucic became the poster boy for the Oilers' lack of quickness, as he and all the other power forwards from the 2016 free agency class suddenly became irrelevant on the ice and a massive salary cap liability. Ken Holland has done a solid job of upgrading the team's speed. He brought in Sheehan and Archibald via free agency, and Athanasiu and Ennis through trades. But I would argue that trading away Lucic, removing one of the slowest players in the league from the Oilers' top six in power play unit, has done just as much to improve the team's speed than acquiring those other players. Trading him to a provincial rival where he's made the highlight reels for all the wrong reasons, logged more power play minutes than any forward not named Goudreau, Monaghan, Kachuk, or Lindholm, and the fact that the team has fallen from first to eighth in the West certainly hasn't hurt the Oilers' cause either. Oh well, at least Calgary got a third round pick out of the trade. Er... The other noteworthy difference from the Oilers of a year ago is the atmosphere surrounding the team. When I went to the Oilers Red Wings game back in late January of 2019, the vibe in the arena and specifically on the bench was awful. My buddy Darcy remarked to me during the game that it was the quietest bench he'd ever seen. No one talking, no energy, nothing. Fast forward 18 months and the toxicity that enveloped the team seems to have dissipated. The mood of the group, although focused and determined, seems much more optimistic and lighthearted. I believe the root of this is Dave Tippett. It's clear he genuinely cares about his players as people and wants to see them succeed. We've seen time and again in the past, players in Edmonton get beaten down by prolonged slumps, lost confidence, and angry fans. All of these factors can be alleviated with an encouraging coach. I believe this is why we saw Leon Dreisaitl put his horrendous month of December behind him in such a stunning fashion. Rather than fizzle out after a long stretch of poor play, Dreisaitl absolutely set the league on fire down the stretch. Having this type of coaching is critical in a Canadian market where the pressure to perform can be overwhelming at times. The Oilers are fortunate to have him. Now, Edmonton is playing Chicago in the play-in rounds. Remember my buddy Daryl from earlier who has given me the gears about the weight gain? We're pretty good buds. Well, he is a Hawks fan and he absolutely hates the Oilers. He has said some pretty unsavory things about Ryan Smith in the past, which I have since forgiven him for. But the thing is, I don't reciprocate that hatred towards the Blackhawks. As a matter of fact, I've had a soft spot for Chicago ever since they knocked off that dirty 2009 Canucks team in the Western semifinals. Jonathan Taves in particular is a player I can get behind, as he has many admirable qualities. He's a strong leader, he works hard, and he's good defensively, as evidenced by his 2013 Selkie Trophy. I've even got a Team Canada Taves t-shirt that I pull out every Canada Day. Some of the other Hawks players from their cup years that I've really liked and secretly hoped the Oilers would trade for are Duncan Keith, Marion Hossa, and Dustin Bufflin. Taking a quick look at these Blackhawks teams, it looks like the Oilers wound up with Ben Eager... Colin Frazier, and Cam Barker. Jeez. But as much as I've liked these Hawks teams over the years, 
oddly enough, I've never cheered for them in the Stanley Cup final. In 2010, I was watching the games with my buddy Shawnee, who is a Flyers fan, so I pulled for the Broad Street Bullies. In 2013, I chose family over friends and cheered for my dad's beloved Bruins to beat the Hawks. And in 2015, I didn't really care who won, but the Hawks had already won two cups, so part of me wanted the Lightning to take it. And here's the thing, I won't be cheering for them in this series either. Now, I'm actually not going to break down the series right now because it's almost dark out and I am absolutely being eaten alive by mosquitoes. Instead, I'm going to do a live stream just before game one with a few of my buddies. David Graham, Shawnee Belanger, and Braden Can are going to sit down with me for a nice round table discussion. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next Saturday. Holy frickin' mosquitoes, Batman.